Okay, now that all of my basic tracks are recorded, I'm going to continue on and set up a basic mix. We're going to keep this completely in the virtual environment and show you how this is possible. It's a very, very fun and a very incredible way to work. First step you see me doing here is going down each track, and I'm going to start trimming off or cleaning off the beginning or the noise portion before that track actually begins playing. Here, uh, for instance, you see the bass doesn't start till later in the song, so I simply place the cursor close to where the bass comes in. I'm using the update command to update that region. Now, this is all being done automatic. I don't really need to look through the regions list and trim and create new regions and so forth. This is all handled in a visual method here. I place the cursor, I hit a key, update the entry. It's a very great, powerful way to work. I come on down to each of my overdubs, clean them up. I also use this... Uh, technique to clean up sections that are in between in the middle of takes. So for instance, I look around here and uh, I'll note when we come down here into the sax area on in the sax section here during the uh, organ solo, I think, is where the sax is not playing at all. And what we have there is just background drum leakage coming in through the sax mic. Notice what I'm doing is I'm actually splitting off the sax entry and then trimming out an in-between section, leaving a hole in the middle of the sax track where the sax doesn't play. Now, there's an added benefit here. Besides getting rid of the noise, we're giving back CPU time to the multi-track, which can be then used for other effects processing. And speaking of effects processing, we're going to need some reverb to start out with. So I'm going to get into the mixer views here. In fact, I'm going to use that, my, one of my favorites, the wide mixer view. And I'm going to first select the return channel number one. I'm going to use aux send one and return one. Now I'm assigning the return one output to the main bus, coming over to my effects choices, and I'm going to pick my favorite reverb. So I patch in my reverb into the post effects. I'm going to go up into the reverb unit, and I'm going to find a preset that I like. As gymnasium is one of my favorites. Now we're in an aux send return environment, which means I need no dry signal. I need all wet signal. And uh, I, for this demonstration, I'm just going to take the chamber down to a little over two seconds, so have a, a basic general reverb. This is now available on aux send one, so all channels can easily talk to this reverb via aux send one. So let's get going. Let's hear what we got, and let's start working on the music itself. All right, let's begin. First, I'm going to select these channels here, and I'm going to go down and get one mute switch. And because this creates a temporary group, I get all mute switches. So now I'm cleaned up. I'm listening to one track. I'm going to start on the kick drum. This is a general technique for me. Let's see what we can do with the kick drum. I'm going to put in some EQ. First thing I notice is a little low-end rumble. So I'm going to clean that up and roll this off a little here, fit about 55 cycles. I'm going to lose that top end that I don't need. Maybe put a little bit of edge up here, the, the 4K area. I'm going to put a little low-end back in. And, uh, you know, I tend to... Feel maybe we can warm this up a little bit, knocking out a notch somewhere around 240, 230, somewhere in there. So, we now have a basic kick drum sound cleaned up a little bit. I'm switching channels, unmuting. Now I'm listening to a snare drum. So I start building my mix this way. This is very similar to the way I do it on a physical console. The difference here is all my stuff is right here in front of me without me moving from my seat. I don't have to leave my sweet spot. I'm not rolling my chair up and down to reach across you know, a large console and roll down to the corner to patch things in and so forth. It is really a fun way to work and it's really very much the same as working on a physical console. It is not a far stretch to make this happen. You'll notice I'm, let me go back up here, we're done. Notice also I just a quick click of the mouse and I don't have to wait for rewind time on my tape deck. So there's a lot of reasons why this all adds up to an incredible way to mix. Here I'm using the compressor that's built in. I'm changing the release time, shortening it down. I'm going to adjust the threshold till I just start to see my red lights, you know, uh, kicking that right at the tip of the snare drum. And that gives me all the snares at roughly about the same uh, level and impact, so they hold their power in the mix without any changes. Now, here we go with the aux N1, like working a console. As you can hear, I'm feeding directly to my virtual reverb. And I have separate control here, exactly like a physical console. All right, we're off to the next uh, channel. This happens to be the left-right drum situation. This is the left side. I'm going to go in again, roll off some of the low, low end, but i got to leave some stuff in there because we do have toms on this uh, track. Um, high end, this is all symbols, uh, you know, this is where all my symbols are. So I kind of tend to like to peak a little around 12K or something. Uh, in this case, I'm going to roll off a little in the middle. I got to warm up the, uh, the trash can kind of leakage that comes in through that in that 1K area. 
Now I'm on the right channel, and I actually want to match the left channel signal. So what I'm going to do is first go back to the left channel, and I use this pop-up store and recall channel information uh, feature in Saw, switch back to the right channel, and simply recall the EQ setting from the channel prior. So you can copy and restore anything from one channel to the next. Let's get this, let's get this going again here. A very powerful technique. You can also restore individual channel effect settings, compressor settings, EQ settings, level, volume, pan settings. Everything can be controlled. So let's bring the bass in next. And good, the bass EQ is pretty good. I want to get right to the compressor here, though. Again, let me shorten up the, uh, let's get a, a little bit of ratio here going. Let me shorten up the release time. And let's uh, get this threshold into where we're just starting to clip into the red light area. Now take a look. See how nice and even I'm holding most of my bass signals there. Let me get a level, set it back in there a little above the kick. Very powerful, easy way to work. Notice I'm not having to run all over the place. I'm not punching things in here and there. Everything is right in front of me with this view. I simply just go down the block. Okay, organ. What are we going to do with this? We can just go left, just go right, just go mono. Let's try a cross delay stereo. This is one of my favorites. My built-in echo, patch it in, set the mode to cross mode. When I go to cross mode, everything coming in on the left switches over to the right. Everything going at echoes to the right. Everything on the right goes to the left based on your settings here. You have independent settings. So I'm going to do is set the delay time to about 20 some milliseconds. Okay, again, let's go up here and restart the playback. Again, notice no rewind time. Just simply hit the key. All right, now let's look how this works. This is the dry signal. By dropping the dry signal, I'm hearing only the, the delay. The left side is gone because that's where the dry signal is. Now there's also some leakage over here from the right side over to the left that's crossing. I can lower that or blend that to balance. The real key here to the cross delay is this left delay, which is crossing to the right. That balances out the dry over on the right side and gives me the illusion of that wide stereo cross delay stereo effect. This is a very exciting way to handle a mono instrument in a mix, give it plenty more dimension. I'm gonna put a little bit of chamber on here. So some of those short hits will kind of bring out a little bit, give it a little bit of ambience and dimension. EQ wise, I think I'd like to, I'll tend to like to have a little edge on it. And in my style, I tend to thin things out around that 200 to 400 range, get them out of the way of the bass. Now I did notice during the performance that, especially in the solo, there's a lot of uh, areas where the, the signal level varies drastically. So I'm gonna put a little compression on here again, shortening down my release time. And I'm gonna get those red lights flash in there on the compressor and try and hold the organ into a more even level pattern. But notice as you're listening now, if you, especially if you've got headphones on, this is a good time to start to take note the dimension that's building. By opening up that stereo thing, we create kind of a, a hole where we can leave the kick, snare, and bass and so forth in the center. If you had vocals, this is a perfect way to mix because the vocals can sit unobstructed in the center. Now, guitar, we have really the same problem. It's a mono instrument. It's